level of detail never before achieved for the Great Pyramid now makes it possible to verify the hypotheses formulated about the construction and placement of the relieving chambers and the King's Chamber. Or even key clues to a specific method used for smoothing the blocks. All of this provides new insight into construction practices, site logistics, and the timeline of operations. There you have it, my friends, the stunning announcements made by the teams of the Inside the Great Pyramid mission. But what is really behind this mission? I suggest we investigate further in today's video by giving you all the details that were announced following this mission. A sort of appetizer. While we wait for the full study, let's get started. The Inside the Great Pyramid mission aims to publish a comprehensive study of the relieving chambers of the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Giza. To carry out this mission, two field operations took place in 2024. The first, from March 16 to 26, during which the researchers were assisted by five workers responsible for the safety of the team members during their ascent, after setting up a 12-meter ladder at the top of the Grand Gallery. The second mission, in which Frank Meunier participated, took place from October 27 to November 7. Their goal was to create a very high-resolution 3D model of the upper chamber as well as its relieving chambers in order to enable an unprecedented study of these unique structures in Egyptian architecture. The first field operation focused on carrying out a very high-definition 3D scan geo-referenced and textured with a photogrammetric coverage of millimeter precision for several structures. Namely, the relieving chambers and their associated tunnels, the top of the Grand Gallery, the Chamber of Hers, which some also call the Antechamber, and finally, the King's Chamber. Two 3D scans of the relieving chambers had already been carried out in 2022 first by the WorldScan project, then by Alban Bryce Pimput as part of the production of a documentary. However, these two models intended for scientific promotion do not offer the resolution and precision required for an architectural and epigraphic study as planned by the project inside the Great Pyramid. However, consulting them was useful for preparing the mission, particularly by allowing us to anticipate the constraints that could hinder the multi-scale digitization of the installations. The cramped spaces, the irregularity of the floors, walls, and shafts connecting the chambers to each other, along with the narrowness of their access windows, which often form bends, are all obstacles to topographic surveying. By tachyometry, wait a minute, what is tachyometry? You might ask me. Well, it's simply a method that allows you to create leveled maps using a tachyometer. Well, you might say, that doesn't help us much, does it? Unfortunately? A tachyometer is simply a device used to measure the horizontal and vertical angles between two targets, as well as the distance between those same targets. Thanks to the 3D survey carried out by Pimpot, a precise vertical axis was identified in the chimneys drilled by Colonel Weiss's teams. In 1837, thanks to the vertical survey in the chimneys drilled by Colonel Weiss's teams, Only under these conditions can precise, drift-free alignment of laser grammetric surveys for each relieving chamber be ensured. Two pieces of equipment were therefore specially designed ahead of the mission to adjust the orientation of the scanner, and to ensure safe setup in areas where the ceiling height is particularly limited. Thus, laser scanning not only provided high-resolution 3D coverage, but also served as a complement to the topographic survey by total station carried out in the Grand Gallery, allowing the model to be geo-referenced. To accomplish all this, 289 different scan positions recorded over 11 million 3D points for all the targeted structures. 
to achieve optimal photogrammetric coverage, it was necessary to develop a specific intervention protocol as well as a new portable lighting device that is lightweight, autonomous, and provides even illumination. More than 24,000 photographs were taken in addition to the supplementary surveys carried out during the second operation. The photogrammetric survey enables even higher resolution in 3D models. It goes from 2 to 0.1 mm while also providing them with extremely detailed texturing. The project has always aimed to create facsimiles of workers' marks using orthographies processed with specific tools and technologies. It seemed preferable at first to carry out the recordings in situ with a simple epigraphic survey. Record the inscriptions as seen. The working conditions of this mission were particularly difficult. Darkness, cramped spaces, difficult ascent, poor air volume, and renewal, all worsened by the concentration of bat droppings and black dust. But despite everything, all the Takeo laser and photogrammetric measurements were successfully carried out. The last time I spoke with Frank Mounier, he actually mentioned it to me. The working conditions were extremely tough, almost an understatement based on his description. By the way, I think it could be highly interesting to discuss this with him in detail through a short interview. If that's an idea that interests you, that appeals to you, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments, and I'll allow myself to suggest the idea to him from an outside perspective. What makes this mission even more unique is that during all the trips I've taken to Egypt, I've never seen anything like this. Who could have left a clue hinting at this mission? It's true that for Scan Pyramid in 2017, 2018, and 2022, if I'm not mistaken, we were able to see equipment, infrastructure, even people who were working as part of Scan Pyramid outside the Great Pyramid of Giza. But for this mission, since it took place entirely inside the Great Pyramid and the researchers, the archaeologists, before opening, after closing, or between noon and 1 o'clock, the time when the pyramid is closed to the public. We just discovered with great joy that something happened over several months in 2024. And on your side, by the way, if you want to be part of the next group with whom, are we going to stroll around all over the Giza Plateau and around the Great Pyramid? And who knows, maybe see the Scan Pyramid equipment when they move on to the next stage of their research. Well, don't hesitate to click on the little I that appears on the screen or simply go to the video description where you'll find the useful link with all the detailed information you need. The following months were devoted to analyzing this data. The 3D models were put into production and orthophotos with a resolution of one pixel per millimeter were created for each side of every recorded volume. From this data, Frank Monnier, for example, recreated the entire structure of the studied installations block by block and produced a complete series. Architectural views including side sections, axial views, three-dimensional views, and so on. Aurora Chiavati, for her part, used the orthographies and created precise, finely vectorized facsimiles of all the inscriptions. R. or Shiavati, equipped with this preliminary documentation, a second study mission was carried out in the relieving chambers in October 2024. The first objective was to complete the photogrammetry at certain specific locations where the orthographies showed blurred areas. It's true that inaccuracies are inevitable under these working conditions. Additional measurements and surveys were carried out. For example, the layout of the joints of the masonry blocks that were torn open by the gunpowder blasting of Oward Weiss's chimneys. These joints were actually almost undetectable on the 3D model despite its very high precision and, surprisingly, extremely difficult to identify and follow with the naked eye. The facsimiles of the inscriptions were also checked and, if necessary, completed. But the main goal was above all to allow researchers to focus on the purpose of the painted construction lines. They are key clues to a specific method used for smoothing the blocks during the study of the structure, and the traces of structural damage visible in each of the chambers.
Based on direct observation, reconstructions with a level of detail never before achieved for the Great Pyramid now make it possible to verify the hypotheses that have been formulated about the construction and installation of the relieving chambers and the King's Chamber. The collected data will make it possible to determine, with a very limited margin of error, the dimensions, volumes, and masses of the five levels of granite beams. Previously unknown workers' marks have also been discovered among them. A mention of the goddess Wat Jet, which researchers suggest should be understood as part of a new team name, was identified on the west wall of Nelson's chamber. It was also on this wall that it was discovered, a previously unknown date that they deciphered as being the year of the sixth census during the reign of Cheops, with the cattle census taking place every two years. That means that at this stage of construction, the king had reigned for 12 years, only 12 years, I want to say. Two other dates have also been identified, one of which is on the west wall of Lady Arbuthnot's chamber. The Inside the Great Pyramid mission has therefore achieved its objectives. It has shed new light on construction practices, site logistics, and the chronology of operations. For my part, I obviously can't wait for the full study from the mission to be published. And when that happens, you can be sure that I won't hesitate to give you all the details here, even on the channel. Also, as I suggested a little earlier in the video, let me know if you would be interested in an interview with Frank Mounier so that he can take us, lead us by the hand behind the scenes of such a mission. Thank you dear friends for your loyalty and for watching the video to the end. And as I say, see you next time, take care of yourselves, and above all, don't forget to keep the passion. Ciao, ciao.